Alright, let's see what's happening here. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I haven't streamed since YouTube changed their streaming stuff. And I'm going to try to see if it'll work. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we're going to try. <laughs> also, I'm not sure if I have any way of telling if this is working or not. My thing says it's streaming, but YouTube has not quite proven it yet. So let's see if this is really working. Okay, I'm not sure that this is actually working. One watching, that's cool. All right. That is not what it's supposed to look like though, that's funny. Uh. This is uh, very interesting in that, let me see if I can mute this. Hello, Mark Bun Jones. <laughs> Things changed since the last time I tried to do a stream. So it still says CD release party. Awesome. Well, I don't know. We're just going to... The plan was to do a tiny painting review, and I set up this awesome thumbnail, and I worked really hard to try to put it all together. It didn't work. So, we're going to keep trying. But there's no way really to try without going live. And I don't want to stop going live, so we're just going to have it say CD release party. But really, we're going to do tiny painting review. Oh, goodness, things are weird. Things are always weird on the YouTube. I brought my guitar, but I don't plan on really doing much with it. I thought that I might just, uh... Uh, you guys in the chat, let me know if the audio is okay, or if I need to up or down, if the lighting is okay. Um, specifically, can you see this tiny painting well? It's not too washed out or blurry or anything. Well, I haven't actually showed all of my tiny paintings for a while, or ever, other than just randomly <laughs> in a live stream. So I wanted to do a... <laughs> wanted to do a tiny painting review, because I've got tiny paintings to share. So, uh... What is this, uh... How about this? One of these is weird. That one's weird. I've got tiny paintings, let me tell you. Let me ask you this, guys. Do you think it would be better if I stopped the stream and fixed the title and everything over there? Or do you think it's better to just power on through and do a tiny painting review titled as a CD release party? That's kind of bugging me. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I couldn't ask for a better test audience, I tell you that. I don't know, we'll see. This thing says it's in tune, but it's sounding not, not perfect. I like that, Mark. Thank you so much. 
like I say, I couldn't ask for a better, uh, a better test audience. I'm gonna power through, I think, because I think everybody knows that I had a CD release party last year. I don't think I've done that much live since then. I will rename it later. Just thought I'd do a little bumping music. And then we'll get into the review here. Let me sing some words. I said, baby, did you ever wonder? WKRP Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking Town to town, up and down the dial Baby, you and me were never meant to be But maybe think of me once in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati We'll see how, how this goes. If I'm only reviewing to you two guys, that's okay with me too, but anybody else who sees this now or later is welcome to uh, review with us. This is one box of paintings. It's not that full, just kind of full. And then ugh, this is another box of paintings, a little more full. Kind of full. And neither of them have this year's tiny paintings which are just stacked up all over the place. So, um, Mark asked a wonderful question about the beard. Let me tell you about this beard. Um, been growing it for a decade or so. And at some point in there, I stopped, trimmed it all, and then didn't like that, so I went back to full beard. My wife didn't like that. She wanted the beard. Um, but, uh, as long as we're both in agreement that the beard is the way to go, I'm just gonna keep the beard. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, after a while it just stops right here and doesn't grow any farther. I wish I could get it to grow to my knees, but somehow the body says, no, I think that's enough beard. You better just stop right there. Uh, my wonderful twin Gomez says it's my diet entirely that stops it there, and that's very possible. Um, did some awesome paintings so far this season, including this fantastic little Boston Dynamic robot. So much fun. So much fun indeed. I'm enjoying some of the different kinds of paintings this year. A little more, I don't want to say sci-fi, but at least a little more spacey and, and future-y. So this one is a, this is a fun one. This is a little uh, robot portrait that I challenged myself to do and I think it came out okay. Um, tons of great ones. This was the first one I did this season, a tree that's by my work, and I wanted to capture it, so I've taken pictures of it during several seasons. And the way this one came out with the orange and the blue and then all the thing, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff for sure. So I've got paintings. I've got a lot of paintings that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, this is one that I thought was fun too. I love trees. I could just paint trees forever. Zoom in on the bark and I can paint that. I could zoom out and just do a forest. I don't know. I could put a little door on it, make it look like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun place to go. But, uh, yeah. Just enjoying, enjoying the life, enjoying the times. Wanted to share some of these tiny paintings with you guys. And I've got all of the, all of this year's tiny paintings right here still. And maybe I'll go through some of those, but I really wanted to jump into some of these really old ones. Some of these I haven't actually seen since I boxed them up some long time ago. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, you guys remember this one, don't you? You remember that one? Anybody remember this one? That's a winner. Heck of a beard in that one, that's for sure. It's no Jim Brintar beard, but it's a heck of a beard. This one was a fun one. I remember that little walk and talk, and I enjoyed watching it a whole bunch. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to paint that. That looks pretty rad. 
So, uh, and I think I captured the likeness pretty well. Luckily, there was a beard. It's a lot easier to do a likeness when there's a beard. <laughs> there is some great, great old paintings on here. I did this weird little abstract. I don't know if I can put it all together right or not, but it was neat. Maybe I'll do it in pairs. Maybe I won't even remember how it went at all. Sometimes that's the fun part is messing it all up and being like, how did that go again? What about this? Is that the right thing? I don't know. It was a fun one because I used these little standout thingies on it. And it goes like four ways. There's like four of them that go together. And so it's supposed to be this. Where am I at? It's supposed to be this thing. I don't know. I used to think I wanted to be an abstract painter. And now I, I don't know. The abstracts aren't always my funnest. Not to say they're not fun. This one right here, very, very fun abstract. And I might do more Brinter abstracts over here. I love this one a lot. I love that one a whole bunch. So I don't know about those those random little ones. Y'all remember this one? <laughs> These are so good. Where should I do it? I like that is best, because then you can still see my face. But then you, well, hey, stand up there, mister. Now, if you notice on this one, the background, I tried to go for the MFJ wood grain. I'm not sure if I got that, but I really love those old wood grain little patterns that our good buddy Mark used to do. Heck, maybe he still does them. I haven't caught him live in too long, way too long. And I, I guess, Mark, you go live uh, Friday nights at 7.30, something like that, 6.30, 2.30, 1.30, something. Sometime on a Friday, I think you go live, and I haven't quite caught you, but I like this one a whole bunch. An extension of that, uh, that classic chess set. Do I still have the chess set in here? I don't know. Oh, I remember this one, too. Wow, all kinds of cool stuff. Wood grain augmentation. That's how you say it. That's how you say it right there. This is one of my favorite little, uh, Fungestic bills, because in doing the sky, somehow I ended up with some green, and it made this awesome little rainbow. I put a castle in the back in this pretty little tree. <laughs> it's a Fungestic bill. Not quite the Majestic bill that Mark Fun Jones does, but an augmentation of that. <laughs> I don't know how many of these I'm actually going to do, but uh, you never know. You never know. I could just keep going. I got to remember to keep them separate because I want to make sure that the stack from this year stays separate, but also that I don't really try uh, too many. This was a fun one. I remember this one. This one was really cool. What do y'all think? A little gazebo in there, a little path to the sea. Hi, Nez Lover. How are you? So good to see you. What a wonderful group we have. This is this little gazebo. I wish I could just walk out there down that path and sit at the gazebo with my guitar and play songs to the sea. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know it. I know it. Having some fun with them. I, As much as I get to share them once a week when I paint them, I haven't done a lot of bulk sharing of the tiny paintings. Um, so I thought, what the heck? Let's do some live streams of just sharing the tiny paintings, right? Hey, you know what? I've always loved $3 words. $3 words are cheap for me. They come a dime a dozen. This might be the favorite painting I maybe ever have painted. I can sit and look at this thing for hours. I don't even know how that happened. But that might be my favorite painting of any size, of any era. I don't know. This is, I don't know, this is the one for me. Well, thank you, Nez. It's nice to be live. I can tell that there's a little bit of a delay, right? Uh, and while little things like that really bother me, eh, I'm gonna let it go. It's not the end of the world. My favorite planet, Mars. I think it actually goes like this, if I'm not mistaken. Nah. Yeah, it's like this, where you can like almost see Noctis Labyrinthus over here, but you have the whole the whole thing going on. Yeah, I do love me 
some Mars. Uh, lots of great books. Lots of great current sci-fi as far as, like, real people actually trying to go to Mars. Didn't we just try to send a rover to Mars? We're in the window, so I bet they did just send a rover. I think I remember that launch. Ah, I love Mars. I could talk about Mars for a long time. No, they're not taking up that that much space. Um, of course, my wife has a tiny gallery at her office, but I had thought about getting like a cork board or something like that and doing like a rotating tiny gallery that I could hang up locally or just have up here at the house. These are things that I think about, but have not actually acted upon. So yeah, I'm super excited about this new Rover too. It's gonna be a big one. It's like where some of them are just kind of like the size of a small four wheeler. This one's supposed to be the size of a large SUV. Which is big. <laughs> I haven't seen a Bama Mike live stream in so long. You're so right. Uh, this is this is a red sphere, and one of my earliest paintings when I was still in high school was a full size of this, and I then did a whole series of like red spheres and orbs and glowing things. Sure, sure, cousin, sure, sure, hanging out over here. Sure, sure. Lake Trout Jones! All of the cousins up in here. Um, I gave the original to my best friend and he's had it hanging on his wall for years and I love going to his house and seeing it, but I also had to paint myself a tiny one. Oh yeah, it does have that tiny little helicopter, doesn't it? I forgot about that. I forgot about the tiny helicopter. This one is one I painted called Dichotomy. And it's a three-piece, but I don't want to find the other one, so I'm just going to do these two. That was kind of fun, where you use a knife and just spread the painting so there's cool streaks. And then you cut up some peeled dry paint and just plaster it on. Yes, 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 Papa Jack Sparrow. Arrgh! <laughs> Lake Trout Jones! Swimming in the water! Oh yeah, all the water! Whoa, whoa now. Yes, yes, you guys remember this, how's it go? I think it's this one. You guys remember this little rose? Maybe not my best painting ever, but this is one that still inspires me regularly. Very regularly. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, water, all the water. That's where fish lives. This is one of my favorites too, a little still life. <laughs> Pipe and hat. I should do some more still lives. There's some fun ones. The funnest part is um, posting these up here and it's hard to actually you know, figure out how to do it right. And then over here on my monitor, I'm watching it happen like four or five seconds later. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, that rose is something special, isn't it? I really enjoyed that one. There's some other flowers that I've done that have just been winners, and I've never painted flowers before. The first one I ever tried was just, I don't want to say perfect, but it was as near perfect as I could do. Um, and that one is on my wife's wall. She loves that one too. This one I thought was pretty good with kind of the bright white in there. Thank you, Sherry. I love the rose too, Neslover. I, uh, I used to have a rose bush, bush out, out front but it kind of died, half died, and once it half died, we just chopped the thing down. We said, eh, we don't need it. <laughs> this is one that turned into the kissy night. Somehow the mouth turned into a pucker, and now that night is the kissy night. <laughs> Inspired from a painting in a painting, um, there's an old Renaissance style of painting where you paint a whole room, a whole gallery room of other paintings, and so you have this giant painting that has like 50 paintings on the wall. And one of those paintings on that wall of whatever painting, I don't know if I could even find the original painting again, had this knight on it. And he's the kissy knight. Look at that. He's got a little pucker. He's going, mm -mwah, mm -mwah. Better quit that. My kitties are going to come running around saying, what? What? Papa's giving out free loves? Oh, oh my goodness. This is just this box. And maybe this box only has this size of, of painting. You guys remember the Kitschy Travels? 
painting. Tammy Faye Baker tears. <laughs> that one inspired me a lot, and I had to do one. What up, Movie Mania Nick? What? 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 Good to see you, my dude. Good to see everybody hanging out, having a little fun while I share some tiny paintings. Because let me tell you, I've got a treasure trove. There's this box, which I'm not even halfway through yet. And there's this box, which is not as full, but still plenty. I think this is my big ones and some of my sets. And then there's this year's tiny paintings, which I have not gotten to. Well, I showed a couple of them. Some of the smaller ones. Let me show some of the larger ones, because I like these a lot. I do a lot of uh, landscapes, because that's really my wheelhouse. And they always have these pretty blue skies and just perfect. And I hadn't done a lot of dark and gloomy. So a week or two or four ago, it was a rainy week. And driving to work, I caught this field with this tree line totally covered by, sh by clouds. But this kind of highlit cloud floating through the air, kind of telling its own story, if you will. Mark Sherry, right? Telling the stone story. Um, so I wanted to paint something a little gloomier. And I liked it so much that I might continue to paint some gloomy sort of landscape paintings. I don't know. Isn't that great? I got such a good blend. I was so lucky to get that blend. I mean, I have so much less practice at gloomy skies that I was unsure. But the thing I, I'm not a big fan of is how the tree line just kind of disappears in there. You can't really see it that well. But one of my favorite paintings as well, maybe just because of how uh, fresh, fresh it is. Um, and then this one is the self-portrait. I haven't done a self-portrait in a long time, and usually they're gigantic, if you, uh, if you can believe that. I know you guys have seen the real giant one of just my face. That's a, a fun one. Um, and then I have a pretty big one that was me as a Civil War general which I thought was funny when I was 25, but now that I'm past 30, it, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is one of my favorites in a, a lifetime thing. I think that the self-portraits are just special, and you gotta, you gotta share them when you can, but, man. This one is called uh, Trapezoidal Doorways. And I have a whole series in mind for this, both abstract and realistic. Uh, just kind of an inspiration from a, a YouTube channel called Bright Insight, which kind of does, I don't want to necessarily say conspiracy videos, but more like alt history, kind of digging into some stuff that they don't cover. Uh, previous civilizations, you know, pre-Bronze Age civilizations. I love it because it just kind of walks out. You just want to walk through it. Um, I've looked into how to make looping videos of it where it looks like you're walking through and then it just keeps running forever. That's that's what I want to do, and I think those would be awesome for music videos as well. Really, one of my favorite types of abstract, if I could keep that style going. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, you have not passed 30 you're still 22, right? Here's my space guy. Well, yeah, the the trapezoidal doorways was kind of Brintar inspired. I wanted to do that kind of thing, but it wasn't straight up Brintar inspired like uh, this other one. Where'd that other one go? This one. This one is very, that's, that's like a straight up Jim Brintar painting right there. Absolutely. Yeah, this one, I don't know, I, I wanted to paint some spacier stuff and make some spacier songs, I guess, for the the thing. So this is just some dude floating in space, jamming on his git fiddle. <laughs> having a lot of fun, having a lot of fun here with you guys, but also having a lot of fun making tiny paintings. And sometimes I run out of Inspirato and I have to try to figure out how to get it back. Sometimes I'm just inundated with 50 ideas and I can only do one or two. Here's a fun little castle I did. 
for a while I was doing castles and I really love the orange sky in this where you can really see this uh, I don't know it, it's just it's a place that I'd like to visit although I don't think it really exists <laughs> she was just being honest sure sure oh yeah this one is and how it turned out just impresses me so much but this is very much a Jim Brintar piece it entitled uh, Brintar abstract or something like that but I, I give credit where credit's due that is a Jim Brintar uh, abstract and I'm gonna do more of them I'm absolutely gonna do more of the specific Jim Brintar abstracts because man man that was a lot of fun so much fun I lost time I was like oh oh look my battery's about to die on my video camera this video is gonna end soon anyway I need to wrap this up. And the painting was full, plenty of space, but not all space. This was a castle I liked too. A little bit more gloomy and yeah. You got called grandpa at the skate park last week. Oh, grandpa's got tricks. <laughs> this is actually a castle that I found a picture of and uh, I did a couple of tweaks to it. I flipped it and made it so it wasn't exactly the same castle. But uh, I really enjoyed those castles that I was doing. That was a lot of fun. These are starting to stack up a little bit. Here's one that I know you guys will remember. F's in the chat. F's in the chat to pay our respects. Old Rosie. Yes, indeed. I'm glad that I have this too. I made a song specifically for that that I haven't broke away from yet either. But you know, time flies when you're having fun. This is uh, the White Rabbit's pocket watch, maybe? <laughs> yes, very nice with the heart. The roses for Rosie. What time does that say that it is? Uh, nine? Maybe 10-10? Ren 10-10? 10-10. Got a stack piling up over here of the ones we've already looked at. You guys remember Tiny Painting number two, Dos. The Creeper. Creeping with Clearski. You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, you do. Man, there's some awesome stuff in there. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You guys remember this cornucopia? Where I tried to do a, a tiny painting challenge for Thanksgiving and then didn't organize it very well? <laughs> classic catfish. Creepers! Classic, classic catfish. But the painting turned out well. This too I did an interesting song that was different, which I didn't share a lot elsewhere. There's a couple of tiny painting songs that I haven't shared elsewhere that I think will just stay for those special ones and, and maybe I'll make a couple others to go with them. I'm gonna, there's still some in this box, but I'm gonna switch over to the larger ones because I know this one has some of the sets. You do still have a cornucopia tiny painting and my mother got into the thing and she did a marker painting and I still have that. I love that one a whole bunch. So this one is some of my bigger paintings including, uh, how does that go? I think it goes like this. I think it goes like this. Including Saturn. Remember when I did all those uh, planet paintings? That was pretty rad. That was pretty rad indeed. Enjoyed those quite a bit. This is me trying to, once again, reciprocal inspiration. You inspire me, I'll inspire you. This was a Mark Fun Jones inspired because he used to do these little drips on the edge of the board and let it just seep to the middle. And then as they dried, he'd flip it over and then do some, some drippings on there. So I was like, that's cool. I'm just going to draw those drippings and paint them in. <laughs> it was fun. Although, it's got this black background, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm not the biggest fan of black. I used to paint a lot of black when I was like 16. 
three by three is a lot easier but these big ones i think they're four by four i think it's kind of cheating can you call four by four a tiny painting i don't know i don't know what is it uh one two three they're probably only three they're probably only three inches probably only three inches yes absolutely inspired by salvador dali no, 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 not Salvador Dali, uh, Salvador Van Gogh. Ha! 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 Two of my favorite painters of all time. Remember these gnomes? They're so cute. I'm doing my mythic bestiary. You guys might have seen the Sylphid and the Undine. Um, but those beasts are elementals, and there's those two plus Salamander is a fire elemental. And then the origin of the gnomes come from that same creator, um, Paracelsus, Paracelsus? I, don't, I don't remember his name, I'd have to type it again, but I'm gonna be doing a new gnome one in this new mythic bestiary. And this one I kind of made because I have a, a larger painting that's this little gnome scene with the awesome little mushroom house and I needed to test how to do them. I haven't gotten brave enough to actually paint my gnomes into that painting yet, so. It just is what it is. Yes, it is. What else we got down here? What else do we have? Ooh, that's Jupiter. I thought that one came out terrifically. Very terrifically. Yes, you did a whole bunch of fairy and little thing paintings, Miss Nez. I enjoyed all of them. I enjoyed them indeed. There's some, there's some live stream I need to catch up to. I haven't seen you live in a very long time. Mostly because life is life. We're in a weird time, and we're not going to go there. Jupiter, wonderful, wonderful fun time there. Um, here's a fun little backyard scene. These little stones here just came out so perfectly and then right along the edge I used some uh, paint peel just tiny little flecks to give it this jumping out at you kind of look hi spirit in the sky blue so good to see you thank you for coming to my live stream as you guys can tell and I discussed it with Mark Fun Jones and this old stonerd but I tried to set this up to be tiny painting review and then I pushed the live button and it said, CD release party. And I'm like, what the? the ah, ah. So between the three of us, we decided that we would just power through and look at some tiny paintings. I like the impressionism because you don't have to get too detailed with it and the detail uh, suggests itself. You can kind of do a broad brush stroke and you have this suggested detail. Um, yes, this is one of my favorites. Uh, my wife had it on her wall for a while, but she did decide to trade it out for some of the wonderfuls. This is Wardenclyffe. This is... Well, it was fun. It was a CD release party, but it was last September, and it shows how much live I've been doing since last September. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to make a new CD and then do another CD release party. Not for a little while. That was a lot of work. Um, the giant tower that was going to connect the, I don't know, the, the geophysical electrical circuit and the atmospheric electrical circuit to give everybody free Wi-Fi, but there's no money in free Wi-Fi, so not just Wi-Fi, free energy wirelessly to everybody in the whole world. No. How do you bill for that? How do you put that on a bill? <laughs> Nikola Tesla. Wonderful inspiration, and maybe I will do a uh, Nikola Tesla portrait. I don't know if you guys remember these. This was one of my favorite sets that I did. I like to show them together. But they're uh, the chess piece set. Or some of these other chess pieces that I did. Here's the Red Castle. I can't find the rest of them. They're, I know they're in here someplace. 
This is, uh, I think this is first season type of stuff right here, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I had all of my things in there. Now this one is classic catfish. This is a uh, limbs study that I've kind of been doing as long as I've been painting. I have a big one that I keep on my wall. I think we actually traded that one out for a different, oh, we flipped it over because the backside was radical too. Um, the chest pieces I think would be good to stretch out and replicate, but I love the originals. I've thought about doing some repaintings of some of these ones. Yeah, I think that when I was doing those chess pieces, everybody got inspired to do chess pieces, which is so cool that we all just kind of inspire each other. I love these are actually painted in blue on an orange background, and it makes them kind of darker, makes them look, because of their because the complements, the opposite colors, it makes them just kind of pop as this black or brown. I just, I love complements so much. I got to watch myself not to use too many complementary colors. Um... Oh, here's, here's one of them. This was one that was the bishop and the knight, but it has the castle in the back. In fact, I think that it goes along with... Uh, yeah, I think it goes with this one. Something like that. Well, maybe they don't line up perfectly, but... Yeah, they do. Those are pretty good. And kind of twisted. Eh. And you can see me peeking around over here because I want to make sure that it looks good. Thank you guys so much for being here. So good to see you guys. Having a lot of fun sharing all of these tiny paintings. You could say, perhaps, I'm having a blast. It's my volcano. As my wife pointed out, some of that white should be a lot more orange and yellow. Maybe I'll repaint a volcano too, because I love painting volcanoes. They're just so full of action, but also somewhat easy if you get your smoke and your explosion and your dripping right. Maybe I'll do some Vesuvius or something like that. The, the thing I love about doing tiny paintings is in, in high school early on, I kind of grew to giant paintings. And so, like I say, some of my self-portraits and a lot of my other paintings are just big. As big as I could really make them and fit them in a building, I love giant paintings. Pin Gravit, good to see you. Good to see you so much. Uh, good to see everybody, but certainly people who I've never seen in my live stream before. Just terrific to get to share these with wonderful friends. Oh, look at me! I'm tiny catfish! Ah. <laughs> the closest I'll ever get to a puppet is tiny catfish paintings. <laughs> oh, and I love that this one came out pretty spectacular as well. Here's another set that I enjoyed. Let's see if I can get this spread out before I actually flick it out here. I think it's this, and then I think it's this. Yeah, yeah. This is based off of a series of drawings that I did a long time ago. Is that right? That's not right. How's that look? Oh, yeah. All them birds. A morsel of catfish. You're funny, sure, sure. But sure, sure. I like this one a lot. The, the drawing that I did had like six or seven blackbirds on it. And the tree was a lot more in detail and the background was a lot more in detail. I've actually gone back to that sketchbook a whole bunch to try to find... Ooh, hold my pinky up there like... Uh, a spot of tea. Yes. Yes, indeed. The little morsel. Okay, I think that's all in that box. I want to go back to some of these other ones. That's right, I said other ones. I said other ones. I want to go back to these tiny ones that are over here. Tinier. But then again, maybe I should do some uh, some of the ones from this year. I like this one a whole bunch. This one, actually, I keep by my monitor so I can have it looking at me. Yeah. Demo 2, Bob and Doug. They went in the uh, test SpaceX capsule up to the space station, did some spacewalking, came back just recently. Might have seen me do the splashdown painting this weekend. 
which was a lot of fun to do. That one was very fun as well. I don't actually have it on hand to share with y'all. This is very Bob Rossian in that it's this awesome little winterscape. I think the song that went with it was pretty rad. It gave me this neon trees kind of vibe. And I did another video where I was like just, where it was like uh, all close up on it and like a background, if I can get it just like that. Very neat, very neat. And I thought about doing some of these as like backgrounds on a green screen. So like have one layer with uh, me in front of a green screen doing blah, 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 blah. And then behind it have some of these tiny paintings as the background. I was really inspired to do some bending glass where glass bends the light. You can see the stuff in the background. And this was actually inspired by another painting. I don't, I don't know if it's famous, but it's, it's old of this naked woman admiring a, a fishbowl. I chose to not paint the naked woman. I don't know. I thought it was better fitting for my channel to have less nudity. Um, while I'm not personally offended by it, it does, uh, you know, got to keep the catfish somewhat family friendly. But the goldfish in it was just spectacular. Gave me a chance to do some light reflection on the front side and some bending in the back side, and then you have this goldfish in the middle. I then followed this up with a terrible hourglass. Just horrendous. Maybe the one of the worst paintings I've ever done in my whole tiny painting series. Ugh. Ugh. I cringe. Oh, the cringe. Where is it at? I think it's right here. This thing. What in the world was Catfish thinking? That's... Ugh. I mean, yeah, it's an hourglass, but... <laughs> Shudder. Shudder. I think this one goes like this. This is my Venus flytrap. Less naked women painting, more goldfish. Indeed. I don't know, there's something very autistic, artistic about nudes. Autistic? What? That's Freudian slip. But, Nick, so good to see you. You stay safe as well. And uh, keep reviewing them films. If there's nothing good coming out, heck, just do some old films. Uh, you never know what's good. I've been watching a lot of fun old films. Old films for me are like films from the 90s. So, <laughs> I don't know if we consider those old films or not. So, cheers, Nick. Good to see you. So good. And thank you for coming by the live stream today and saying hi. This one was very Bob Ross. It's this pink morning glow. I think I did it pretty all right with making the the glow just kind of, I don't know if this actually captures it very well with the glare, but. Yeah, you know, I cringe when I know they're not the best I can do. And when, I, when I'm doing my tiny paintings, the camera that I use has a battery life that is like 45 minutes tops. So if I get to 40 minutes, I have to stop. I gotta be prepared to stop, wrap up anything I'm doing and, and finish up right there. And with the, where did I put it, where did I put it? There it is. With the hourglass, I just couldn't get it right and couldn't get it right. I should have put something a little more interesting behind it to really show the bending glass and honestly, I should have done the yellowish colored wood on the base, like on the table it's on, and the reddish color wood on the actual hourglass. So if I repaint it, which I really, on what I'm watching, it's like, oh, so. Uh, Ox, good to see you. Cousin Margie Jones, so good to see you. Wonderful to see all of you here in my tiny painting review, not the CD release party. That the title says it is. I even, I was going to go live at 5.30. I'm like, ah, I should redo the thumbnail. Ah, I should, I should fruit and fruit. Fr but no, it still said, this is what it's called. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gracious me, oh my oh. Anyway, um, I think I have some more paintings here to look at. Maybe we'll, we'll share them. Oh, did I show you the Undine? I love how on the ledge, like, uh, where's that, right here, 
You can see these little water speckles. I love that. And then a little bit of the tail right there coming up. I really, I really felt like mermaids shouldn't be perfectly human tops and perfectly fish bottoms. I felt like they would kind of be more part of the same creature. So I wanted to give this mermaid a little more of a fishy look. And then I was like, where'd her other arm go? But really, it's supposed to be up in front of her, kind of protecting her modesty, as it were. Um, and I thought the eyes and the gills and the little fin, yeah. Yes, this is very recent. This is part of my uh, mythic bestiary that I'm doing. Hopefully I can go beyond it. These, uh, this is one of the other ones. This is called the Sylphid, which is uh, an air spirit. So I thought I'd... Uh... In fact, the wings and the tail are from an actual bird called Sylph. And so I chucked those onto a, a humanoid kind of body and gave it this airy look and made the background very airy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, because uh, Stoner on the Abe Sapien from Hellboy, it really gave me, that's how fish people should look. It shouldn't look like a perfectly human person that could just swim underwater and breathe. I, I don't know, was it Hans Christian Andersen or was it Walt Disney that made mermaids like that? I think they should be a little more real fishy. But this one, yes, this is my fairy painting, Sylphid, which I think is a male sylph. Um, how's this one go? I think this one goes like this, like that. Maybe it goes like this. Here's one that, this one gets me every time. It, it's just a peanut. It's a, maybe a life-sized peanut, but it's a peanut. I'm looking at my screen over here and I can see that I'm all blurry and it's not perfect and it's really annoying me. But, that's the way we live stream today. <laughs> yes, indeed. I love this one. It just, there's something striking about something real sized in, in a little bit of realism that really just, it's just a peanut, it's nothing special, but man, it really gives me some chills. Some chills, I love it when stuff you do gives you that response, that, oh man, oh, Nutter Butters are the best. Ugh, I could binge on some Nutter Butters and have no problem. What in the world? What my heck? What my heck? Yeah, I'm getting hungry for Nutter Butters as well. I'm probably coming up on an hour close to an hour, who knows? Here it is right here. I just showed that one, but I couldn't see it on my screen. So I'll probably wrap it up here pretty soon as I get through some more of these. I just really love this one. I wanna zoom in on it as best I can. The rock formation and the trees and all that light shining in shows how deep into the forest you are and how bright it is out there. There's some other fun ones I've done that give me chills as well. I did this little fox and I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. And I still see the, the flaws in it, but this one's a special one to me just because I didn't think I could. And when I was done, I was pretty impressed. I was pretty impressed with how it came out. I might have to do more animal life to try to get the, the realism in it, try to get some of the, I don't know, character to it. <laughs> Thank you, Margie. Um, you guys probably know I do my tiny paintings every Sunday. I try to do them really early. I get up at like four or five in the morning regularly anyway, just because my brain says get up. And so on Sundays, I get up super early and do a painting and then post it to YouTube. And then by eight o'clock, I go to band practice and I don't even get to come back and check and see what's going on on the YouTube until afternoon. So it's fun to get to wake up, really concentrate on something creative share it and then not see the response immediately. It's not like an instant gratification kind of thing as much as it's a, a delayed gratification. And you can see all the wonderful comments, all of the, the people who get to pop in. And it's been, I guess other live streams, I like to just reach over and, and share a couple of these. I need to do some more of these for fall coming up. I could do a whole series of pumpkins. Oh yeah. Well, 
yeah, Mark, uh, waking up at four seems weird, but if I don't, I'll just lay there in bed and toss and turn and not, there's stuff I could be doing. So I just get up and then sometimes I'll get up and do some stuff and then go back to bed at like six. <laughs> That's how I get four or five naps a day in on the, on a weekend. Mark was mentioning my Robin Hood hat. It is. It, to me, it's a Robin Hood hat, although it's a black Robin Hood hat. Um, very easy to make. This is just like a half circle out of fabric, and you sew it up the middle, and it makes this shape, and you kind of have to do a couple of darts in the back to make it actually fit the head shape. But I'm not 100% sure where this hat is. I've looked since we talked about it recently. I can't put hands on it right now. It'll pop up. It'll pop up right away, as soon as I just don't need it. Yes, yes, yes. Pumpkins and hats. I'm going to do one more. And then I'll probably wind it down. I don't know how exactly this one goes, but this is warm colors in a Fibonacci. You know, Fibonacci where it kind of does this weird little spiral down into the middle. Yeah, it's my schedule. A long time ago, you know, my wife and I decided we weren't going to use alarm clocks anymore because... You know, we're not mice in a maze. We don't need to respond to bells. And our my body just wakes up at a time, and I just go with it. And sometimes it, I get sleepy again, but this is a part of the Fibonacci spiral where uh, I, I very fun for me, where you take it in half, and you divide that by half, and you divide that by half, and you divide that by half. It, it uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I really do love the abstracts, and I've got a lot of ideas for abstracts. So much so that I rarely do a series of them, like the same thing multiple times. And so I'm going to have to come back and do some more, like maybe a cool, cool colors, where this is all warm colors, oranges and yellows and browns that are warm, siennas. So maybe I should do some cool color Fibonacci abstract. I should certainly do more of the Brintar abstracts, because this was so much fun, reminding myself that they can't all be straight lines, coming through and finishing other lines. I would say maybe my favorite painter would be Van Gogh. Um, Edvard Munch, who does the Scream, is also one that I like a whole bunch, some of his other stuff. He did a whole bunch of Scream paintings, but he did some other interesting stuff as well. Um, of course, Salvador Dali, uh, when I was in... DC in my early 20s or so I got to go to the National Museum of Art and they have the Dali that is the Last Supper and that was trippy as heck that was just as cool as it could be I must have stood in that one it was kind of like in a stairwell if I remember it right I could be misremembering it but I remember standing kind of in that little nook wherever they had it oh yeah Monet oh man yeah I mean his sunrises and sunsets where he would like i don't know just sit out and paint for a while the way the day was and then he would put that one aside and pick up a new one because the time had changed and the haze and the sun had changed and he starts another one and just the way monet did did uh, impressionism really inspired me to do it but i sometimes i wish i could do more detail than the impressionists this is one i shared at the beginning just kind of as a test but I really do love that mountain and, and the sky, the way it all came together. And then maybe the last one that I'll do this evening, and again, thank you guys so much for joining me on this live stream. Not CD release party, but a uh, review of my tiny paintings. This is another one that speaks to me a whole bunch. This is very Kansas. I'm sure it's, it's a seen out of elsewhere as well. You could find this in many states in the U.S., many places in Europe and Russia and all kinds of places that this is a scene from. But for me, this is absolutely Kansas. This is my home and, I don't know, the way the shadows came out, the way the clouds just lilt right across the top. The trees have these little, little hole punches in them where you can see sky through. I just want to go out there and lay down and have a picnic. You know? Just have a picnic. Yes, those are hay bales. All bailed up. Yeah, see, it's Ohio. It's Indiana. I'm sure it's Michigan. It's it's all kinds of places in the Midwest, at least, if not elsewhere in the U.S. But for me, it just speaks of Kansas. 
So I'm going to leave it right there. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. Um, you might see me go live uh, fairly soon as I try to test out <laughs> how to fix uh, some of these new live features. The last time I did this, it was all pretty straightforward. And since then, they've changed all of the, the details on how to do live streams in YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Thanks for the updates. You really fixed a whole bunch there. Ugh. So now i got to figure out how to do it again. Become a master of the new. And so in there, I will probably be doing some test live streams and seeing how to do it. I might have to watch uh, some Studio Geek how to do OBS tutorials so I can do a little fancier stuff. But for now, that was not CD release party, but a little bit of a tiny painting review. We looked at a whole bunch of them. Probably the majority of them we got to look at today, if not all but a few. Did they just change it yesterday? Because I thought that I had tried it recently and it had worked out. Didn't I do like a, like a Beatles covers live stream sometime back? I don't know if that was before the record release or after the record release, but I remember doing something like that and it was cool. It was easy then. So. And that's another thing, Stonerd, is I should try to get with StreamYard so I can stream from my cell phone. Right now I'm using one of our spare laptops, one of our, we have one spare laptop, um, which isn't, doesn't belong to anybody, so I can just haul it down into my little room and share it out on live there, and then be able to watch it on my monitor over here so I can follow all the, the talking and chatting and who's a what's-its. Friends, thank you for being here. If I don't stop myself, I'm going to ramble for another four or five hours. So, as all of our friends say, much love around the globe. What's the other one I like to do? Uh, good morning, my peeps. Y'all remember good morning, my peeps? Good morning, my peeps. Peace, love, and Volkswagen grease. And until I see you again, be well and cheers.